Hey everybody, it's Ryan. Welcome back to How Farms Work. Today we're in my truck and we are about to head to the Bloomington Livestock Exchange. And uh, today there is a bull auction going on and it starts at 1 p.m. It's 10 a.m. now, so we got a little bit before we gotta go. Uh, I was deciding on whether or not to take the trailer up, but I think if I buy a bull, then I'll probably just go up tomorrow and get it. Um, hopefully to beat some of the rush of people coming in and taking them today. So there's, I think, around like 50 bulls that are going up for sale at the Bloomington Livestock Exchange. And um, we're going to pick up Hannah, and we're going to head up. And unfortunately, l last year I did buy a bull, some of you will remember. And um, unfortunately, he passed away. Uh, the spring has been really rough. Um, we've, got, we've gotten rain after rain, and then now, just yesterday, we got snow again. So Mother Nature's not totally sure what she wants to be doing. And um, I lost four cattle all well, within a week, and that included my bull. And um, it's leveled out now. I haven't lost anything here, but I need to kind of get on this early because last year I had waited to get a bull, and it was really tough trying to find one. So to kind of stay ahead of the curve, I want to go to an auction here today and see what they're going for. Um, just recently I heard that bulls were going for about twenty-eight to 3000 And... Um, I just kind of want to go up and see what these are going to go for. So we're going to pick up Hannah, and we're going to head to the Bloomington Livestock Exchange this afternoon. There's quite a few people here. Holy crap. There's a lot of people here. If you'll put your hands together for our host today, Mr. Kevin Rattel. Kevin, this. Today we're working to the standard terms and conditions of the American Angus Association. Here's a sure shot heifer bull, a negative bird, double digit cavities direct. He weaned off at almost 800 pounds. He weighs almost 1,500, lot number two. All right, you bet. Lot number two is where we're going to kick off, ladies and gentlemen. Great bull right here. You tell me the 2020 edition of 2K Angus Auction is on. You tell me. Right here, buddy, you can be here. How many on him? Yes, sir. Right here, you can find $6,000 on you. Hey, buddy, I'm going to let you be at 17 and having a good time. Thank you. 
How's it going? Sorry about that. You're okay. All right, so we just left Bloomington. Got a bowl, 2,500. 2400 with a discount if I pick it up by tomorrow morning at noon, which I'm gonna come back in the morning and pick it up. I kind of regret not bringing the trailer along now, but to be honest, coming here, I wasn't sure. I haven't come to one of these 2K auctions before at Bloomington. Um, this is a local family that's pretty well renowned for the quality of their cattle. So um, we'll come back. I'll come back tomorrow and uh, pick the bull up and take him home. Let's go home. He got a little banged up. You're right. Hey, buddy. Rocket. It's the next day now. I gotta move the disc down there so that I can get into the stock trailer, which is in the barnyard behind the spreader. And uh, I'm not gonna be able to navigate my way out of there. So I gotta fire the bobcat up and push the disc back a couple feet so that I can fit the truck through. Try to get out of here. Now we got all the necessities. We got my truck, trailer, and the dog in the back. We're heading to the Bloomington Livestock Exchange to pick up the bull. And uh, we're gonna take him back out to my place and uh, drop him off in the barnyard probably with my cattle. Thank you. All right, we just picked up Bullwinkle. That's what Hannah decided the name of him should be. And I liked it, so. We're gonna head back to my place now. We dumped the bull in with my cows and now he's scoping out the herd. 
So I've got this booklet here from 2K Cattle, and it has all the lot numbers of the bulls in it. And his lot number was 28. And there's a couple numbers that I want to discuss. Um, mostly his CED, which is negative four. Now that's on the lower end of the scale. Um, it goes down, I believe, to minus eight. And um, that's a number that most guys, or a lot of guys, are going to be uh, wanting to be a higher positive number because what that is is it's calving ease direct which is a number that estimates the how easy the first time heifers that he's bred against are going to calve so I believe with a number of negative four um, 10 percent uh, first time heifers are going to need assistance when it comes to giving birth and um, something that you have to take into consideration are what are you going to be breeding this bull against? Are you going to be breeding them against cows um, or first time heifers? So this isn't really a bull that you want to be breeding to first time heifers every year. Um, you're not going to want to throw them into a big lot with a bunch of heifers and have them breed them all because you're probably going to have higher or more issues with when it comes to calving. So you can see below that his birth weight is 92 pounds. That is pretty heavy. But another thing to consider is if you're breeding him against cows, you know, his birth, higher birth weights really aren't a bad thing. Um, they are going to increase the amount of assistance that you're going to need to give. Um, but when it comes to actual growth and rate of gain, higher calving weights increase your rate of gain and um, overall increase the calf performance. And um, looking at his stats here, uh, he has really good stats, but that's probably the biggest number that really draws my eye is the calving ease direct, um, since it is a negative four, but says that he's ranked in the top 1% uh, for of the breed for dollars B, which is beef value, and um, that increases his value per head uh, when it comes to weaning and car its carcass value. So it's gonna increase the value uh, per head by an estimated $208 per head, which seems to me is like, whoa. But, um, I don't know. Uh, I'll just have to keep a close eye on the calves next year when it comes to calving time. Um, I got them for $2,500, which is pretty good, I think. Um, the highest that I had seen go at the auction, well, the time we were there was like 11000 and I don't have 11,000 to spend around on a bull. So um, that's one of the biggest numbers that a lot of guys will look at is the calving ease direct. Um, it's not the lowest number in this booklet. I think I saw a negative eight in here, um, but it is something that you have to take into consideration when it comes to buying bulls. Um, as long as with all the other numbers as well. Um, I don't know what every single one of these means off the top of my head, but that's the big one that a lot of guys are gonna be looking at is that CED. So anyway, um, that's pretty much it for this video. We dropped the bull off, we got a bull, so that's no longer a concern that I gotta worry about. Um, I wanted to kinda jump the gun on it a little bit, get ahead, because last year we had waited until, I think it was July, and we had a hard time finding bulls. And um, I got insurance on this one, so it covers him if he somehow dies in the first year. Um, that was an extra 150 bucks, but since I picked him up at the sales barn, I got $100 off anyway. So I really only paid 50 bucks extra than I would have, than I was expecting for the insurance. And if I had gotten insurance for my last one, would have covered it. So um, it's this time of year, um, we have, I've lost three cows now. Um, it seems like it always comes to this time of year is when we start having issues with losing cows. And um, I don't know if it's just because of the weather and the way that it's been swinging back and forth, but it always seems like March is that time of year. Um, before this, I hadn't lost, I hadn't lost anything since last year at this time. <laughs> but it is what it is. So I'm keeping back a couple of heifers, um, mostly to replace the ones I had gotten since I didn't go to an, a sale this spring. I'm trying to stabilize my feed um, I'm not too sure where my feed is gonna be coming from this year so I didn't want to grow my herd exponentially uh, what I originally intended on was to buy 
30 last year, which I bought 26 on a spring auction for bred cows last year, cows and heifers. And um, this year I was gonna come through and buy 30 more, but with my feed, and I'm not totally sure how my, if my hay's gonna be coming back because it, with all the rain that we'd gotten, um, it didn't look like it came back too well last fall. So I don't wanna go ahead and just buy a bunch of cows and not have a plan in place for how I'm gonna feed them. Um, I'm gonna try to stabilize out, stabilize out my feed first and then worry about growing the herd even more. Um, I'm pretty satisfied with where I'm sitting right now, um, but I'm looking to grow it as time goes on. So anyway, that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching, guys. Be sure to check out all of our other videos. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And be sure to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat, all how farms work. And with that, I'll see you next time.